Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Wallace, Chair of the String Department at Berklee College of Music in Boston and a teacher at MyTalentForge.com. And iFiddle Magazine has asked me to record a video as part of their memorial tribute to the great Texas swing fiddler, Johnny Gimble. So, I'm going to play you a fresh, brand new transcription I just made of one of Johnny's performances of his incredible tune, Gardenia Waltz. And then I'd like to share just a few thoughts and stories about the time that I spent learning from and teaching with Johnny. Because we know a lot about him as a player, but not everybody talks about him as a teacher. But there's some very important things that need to be said. So, enjoy. Oh, and in honor of Johnny being one of the first fiddlers to start using C strings and five string fiddles, I'm going to play Gardenia Waltz on my viola, but in the original key and original register, but just to give it a little more of that dark gimbal fiddle flavor. Johnny's tunes or solos, I'm just reminded what an advanced ear he had, what a sophisticated sense of harmony. And those things came through in his teaching. I first met Johnny in person at his 1996 Texas Swing Camp in Waco, Texas. And so I played in his ensemble, I went to his jams, I went to his classes, and I learned a great deal from his son, Dick Gimble, who is a phenomenal teacher and would often teach in tandem with Johnny as I did with Johnny and Dick in the Mark O'Connor Strings Conferences in San Diego. You see, Johnny was not a traditional teacher in the sense of a pedagogue who had a system or a method or a series of exercise, but rather he exemplified what one of my mentors, Eric Booth, often says about teaching. He says, 80% of what you teach is who you are. And in Johnny's case, that was someone with uh, a passion for music and an encyclopedic knowledge of Texas swing and the musicians who played it and the solos that they played. And so oftentimes in his lessons, he would be teaching by playing different renditions or different variations that you could play, say, for a couple of measures on Beaumont Rack. He would show you how different players played it on different records. And so he had this really deep knowledge of the repertoire. But something else that was central to his teaching and to his own development was everything came from the ear. 
I doubt in his career if he ever performed a solo that he couldn't sing every note or that he didn't hear in his head first. That was one of the things that he taught me was when he was young and learning to improvise on his fiddle, he really learned to sing what he wanted to hear and then play what he sang. And so he said a lot of times he would be working out licks, singing them, figuring out how they worked on the fingerboard, and then playing them. So I'd say that was one big lesson I got from Johnny was the ear comes first. Another thing about Johnny is he knew how to break things down. So like because he had things in his ear and in his memory, he would slow a solo down and show you how to do that. I remember he did that with uh, a number of licks from Dragon the Bow where he showed us, for instance, this is my viola, so this will actually be a fifth down, but um, he showed us like how the, the stop time break in the Dragon the Bow. It's basically just using your first and second fingers, sliding it so you've got... So slide up and then open, then you slide down open, then up, and so that's the whole lick. So you've got, and so he would show you the essence of a lick. That lick sounds really good when you hear it, but all it is is you're sliding a perfect fourth between one and two, up and down, and you've got to get your up and down in the right direction and coordinate it with the bow. But I saw, you know, there was someone who had been trying to figure out that lick from a recording. And in a matter of two minutes, he had the whole class doing it. So that, I think, is another key to his teaching was he understood at the essence what something was. One of the things that I think was also extraordinarily important about Johnny's teaching was he would tell stories all the time. And if you listen, there was a lesson in the story. One of the favorite stories that he kept coming back to over the years involved a conversation he had with his brother after they were playing a Saturday night dance in Texas when they were both young men. And on the pickup ride home, his brother told him after a night where Johnny thought he played really well, he said, Johnny, I'm disappointed in you. And Johnny said, why? I thought I played pretty good tonight. And his brother said, Johnny, you played the same solo as you played last week. And I don't remember what tune it was, but you know, his brother heard that Johnny was doing the exact same thing. And Johnny said, from that point on, I decided that I would never play it the same way once. And so he was fond of that saying, and it really encouraged us to go out on a limb, do something different. Yeah, memorize a lick, memorize a solo, but if you're doing the same solo night after night, well, someone should be disappointed in you. A lot of the learning that would happen from Johnny would happen in a jam session context. He loved to jam. He would jam long and late. And another thing that was kind of magic about jamming with him is if you know the jam session culture, you know there are some little circles that you don't want to step inside because everybody is just so good and so intense and it can feel kind of intimidating or competitive. Johnny could have hung in those circles or could have created those circles because as far as Texas swing fiddlers go, it's hard to find someone who's even close. He's just amazing. But Johnny was inclusive. If you had a little kid timidly sort of standing at the outskirts of a circle with a fiddle, he'd say, come on, get, get in. You know, and if someone was playing and just accompanying and not soloing, sooner or later, he would draw them in. And I know that because some of those early jams, I was the guy who was not just wanting to dive in and show off and solo and kind of feeling like I didn't know what I was doing. But he was so inclusive and so encouraging that it created just this extraordinary atmosphere where everybody was listening to each other. And that's part of the secret of a good jam, is not just thinking about what am I going to play, but actually listening and thinking, how can I fit into this? What do I have to add that hasn't already been done? And similar to the way Bob Wills would call out in you know, a band situation, if someone did something really nice, Johnny would do that too. He'd love to go, yeah! Or, or he'd, he'd whoop or something, and 
when you were soloing and you got a yeah from Johnny Gimbel, you kind of just sort of sat up for a second and said, I just got a yeah from Johnny Gimbel. I must, I must have done something good. I must have done something right. Another thing that I learned from Johnny was just how generous a performer was and generous a, a person he was and how that informed everything that he did. If you ever saw Johnny play live, he just owned the stage. He was there, he lit up the whole audience, he had this smile that would just go for miles. He knew that he was there for the sake of the audience. They were there to have a good time. They were there to be entertained. And so part of his personality was that very likable, very gregarious um, spirit that would draw people in, put a smile on people's faces. He had an incredible delivery so that even if you had heard him tell a joke 50 times, you would still laugh just because the way he projected it was, was that funny. And in closing, I just want to encourage you to check out more of Johnny's music if you don't know it. And if you do, check it out in closer detail or see if you can find some new videos or some old recordings that maybe you don't know so well. Transcribe them, learn the tunes, because he still remains a big inspiration to me, to many of my colleagues here at Berkeley, at MyTalentForge.com, and iFiddle Magazine. And the world's definitely a much better place because of the gift this man had and the gifts that he gave to us all. So take care everybody and happy music.